Okay, most complicated question ever, I think. Three electrolytic cells are collected in a series. Cell 1 contains this, cell 2 contains that, cell 3 contains... Okay, so we're chaining together electrolytic cells now. We have a cell which has two electrodes and sitting next to it we have another cell which contains two electrodes and there's liquid in each of these and then we have a third cell with its own electrodes and some sort of liquid in there and normally you'd have you would take these cells and wire the electrodes together and that would be it you'd have enough well and you'd connect a power supply and that would be enough to keep each of those going what we're doing instead is getting out the big wire and we're going to chain these two electrodes together and chain these two electrodes together and then have one big return line that goes like so with one big power supply in the middle all the way over to here. So this is still an electrical circuit because electrons can go out here, down, they can do this first reaction and then when they leave they go, they hop into the next beaker and they go through this second reaction and when they leave they jump into the next beaker and go through this third reaction and then finally the power supply hauls them back to the beginning and they go through the loop again so each of these is going to have its own chemical reaction inside it it's just they're sharing the same collective pool of electrons and what's important about that is the number of electrons coming out here and going into this reaction and coming out of this reaction all have to be the same. It's the same number of electrons. So if we have, like, if we find that it's four moles of electrons going in here, then there's got to be four moles, four moles, four moles, all the way around. Or if we found that the current was 6.2 amps, it would have to be 6.2 amps at every single point in this circuit. Those amounts have to be equal because it's the same electrons flowing all the way through the loop. It has to be the same at every point. So. That's intimidating so far, to be honest, but let's get some chemicals in here and see if we can figure this thing out. They say cell number one contains magnesium nitride. So magnesium ions and nitrides. Cell two contains sodium chloride. There's the sodium, there's the chlorine. And finally, we get aluminum sulfide. Aluminum 3 and sulfide is minus 2. And the first cell produces 22.2 grams of magnesium metal at the cathode. So we have electrons flowing into here. And we have enough electrons to make 22.2 grams of magnesium metal. Well, the only point of having grams of magnesium, what am I going to say? The only point in having grams is to get moles. Our mass of magne sorry, our number of moles of magnesium, N, will equal mass over molar mass. So it'll be 22.2 grams of magnesium divided by 24.31, which is the molar mass for magnesium. And you get 0 0.9132. 0 0.9132 moles of magnesium. Okay, good. Now, one more thing we need before we really get some traction here. What reaction is happening here? Let's scoot this down a little bit. The reaction is magnesium 2 picks up two electrons and converts to magnesium metal. Okay, that's useful because that tells us if you have your moles of magnesium, double that and that'll tell you how many moles of electrons you've got. Well, we have this many moles of magnesium, so double that number and 
this is a really big deal. We have 1.8264 moles of electrons. Remember why that's important? That's important because that's how many moles of electrons went all the way through this circuit. So at every single electrode, we can say, you transferred 1.8264 moles of electrons. We know because you're all part of the same loop, and that number of electrons went through all of you. These things are all part of a great big chain, and the whole chain got that much traffic passing through it. So we can go to each of these cathodes now and say, we know that you picked up 1.8264 moles of electrons. We can go to the sodium and say, you got 1.8264 moles of electrons. Six, four moles of electrons. And we can go to the aluminum terminal and say, we know you got the same amount also. Had to, no choice. You're all part of a circuit. So for the sodium, I'll spare you writing the reaction. We can do this fast. This is a single charged ion, so the reaction here is going to be one to one. We're going to get one sodium for every mole of electrons that we've got, or one sodium for every electron. So that means we're going to get 1.8264 moles of sodium. And let's get a mass right here while we're at it. 1.8264 times the molar mass for sodium is 22.99. We're going to get 41.99 moles, I'm sorry, not moles, grams. Grams of sodium. For the aluminum, it's quite a bit less because three moles of aluminum only, sorry, three moles of electrons only buys you one aluminum. We have to take this number and divide it by three to get our amount of aluminum. So 1.8264 divided by three. 0 0.6088 moles of aluminum. Its molar mass is 2698, multiply by that. And you get, we only get 16.43 16.43 moles of aluminum. So that takes care of all of our cathodes. And part B, they just follow up and say, how about the anodes? The anodes are molecular, and so the reactions are a little bit trickier. I am going to write these out just to make sure we get them all right. In this first cell, color code it, what the heck, colors are fun. We're taking nitride ions and converting them to nitrogen. So we're starting with N3 minus ions. We're doing something that produces nitrogen. How does this work? Well, there's two nitrogens here, so we better double this. And now we have a charge of minus six on the left, so we better put six electrons over here. So this reaction tells us Every six moles of electrons that you've got will produce one mole of nitrogen gas. OK, well, we have 1.8264 moles. This number continues to pay off for us. We can take 1.8264 divided by 6. Same thing I was doing up here. I'm just writing it out now because I thought I should write it at least once. 1.8264 divided by 6, we get 0 0.30. 4, 4 moles of nitrogen. The molar mass for nitrogen is 28.02. So we produce 8.53 moles of nitrogen. And now we do that two more times. In the middle beaker, we're turning chlorides into chlorine. We're starting with chloride ions. We're producing Cl2. Uh, two chlorine atoms here, so I need a two over here. The total charge on this side is negative two, so this side needs to be negative two also, and two electrons will do that for us. So this tells us two moles of electrons will buy you one mole of chlorine. 
that's the electrons, divide by 2 and you get your amount of chlorine. 0 0.9132 moles of chlorine gas. And its molar mass is 70.90. 0.9132 times 70.90 and we get 64.7 I'm gonna run that again I I put in my decimal wrong and I'm not sure that I fixed it correctly 0.9132 times 70.90 yeah 64.7 grams of chlorine. Oh, look what I did. I wrote moles of nitrogen again. I apologize. That is grams of nitrogen. If I were a little more diligent about my units in here, I would have caught that right away as it is. It took me a second, but these should all be grams. And our last one, switch to blue. How much sulfur do we get? Well, we're taking sulfide ions, S2 minus, and we're producing elemental sulfur, which is S8. If I have 8 sulfur on the right, I need 8 on the left. But now my charge over here is minus 16, so this side needs 16 electrons. So it takes a boatload of electrons to reduce sulfur, or to oxidize sulfur, sorry. We need 16 electrons to produce a single sulfur molecule. So in other words, take your electrons, divide by 16, and that's how much sulfur you're getting. So 1.8 two six four moles of electrons gives us one point eight two six four divided by sixteen zero point one one four one five moles of S eight and the molar mass for S eight you multiply by eight times thirty two point zero seven and you get 29.3 grams of elemental or molecular sulfur. Whew.